Hello all, it's Susan Winter. Welcome to my channel today, live from New York City today where it's about 104 degrees out. <laughs> the real feel and I have the cameras in here and the AC is turned off. Welcome all of you who want to know how to get to commitment. Maybe you've just started seeing somebody, maybe you're in a relationship and you don't know where it's going, or you've been living together and you just want it to move forward. You don't know how to have these discussions. Moreover, maybe you're afraid to, or you don't know how to really gather your thoughts in a way that will make it so advantageous. I will go over the basic three steps today to assist you in getting to whatever type of commitment you want, whether that is, what are we doing here? What do I call us? Are you my boyfriend, girlfriend? Are we in a relationship? Are we sexually exclusive? Well, actually, you're going to say it differently. You're not going to ask them so much. You're going to frame it differently. And about our future, marriage, children, whatever other living models you want. And so welcome, Brian Pablo. You are here. One of my YouTube members. Love this. Jack, welcome. Stacy, nice to see you. Den, hi, Den. Oh, from the Netherlands. Thank you very much. I think B. Oh, Yafa. Hi, Yafa. And Mary Jane, I think B and Gwyneth will be joining us. I don't know that they're here yet, but at any rate, this is wonderful. Okay, so everyone, let's begin with commitment. Now, the first thing I would say to you is to not be afraid to know that you want something. I fear that so many people go into the dating situation thinking, oh God, I don't want to be a pain. I don't want to be difficult. I don't want to look desperate or needy. But if you're drawn to this channel, it's because you're looking for some type of meaningful connection. You want your relationships to be rich and rewarding and you are probably oriented towards some type of relationship model, well, however you want to construct it, the a la carte version that I do with all of you or on your own, but you want to know where you stand. So here are a couple of preliminaries before we get into the actual step. Let me see. I've got some love with you. Gwyneth, welcome. Hello, my dear. Hi, Christopher. So nice. To okay, Christopher, you're in the right place. Glad you're all here. Jonah, LaDonna, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, again, as I said, don't be afraid to want what you want. Another thing, it's not weak to know where you're going. It, 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 you aren't a pain in the butt. You aren't difficult. You aren't insecure. I mean, when you go into a restaurant, you order off the menu. You're not like, oh, God, what's the waiter going to think of me? Oh, I'm difficult. Oh, my Lord. Just sit down with a bunch of people from California and TV. Oh, my God. Yeah, I want the omelet with no eggs. I want the, it's just like, it's your menu for your romantic life. You get to order what you want. You get it delivered and prepared the way you want. But first of all, you've got to know what you want, okay? So one, you also should be filtering from the very beginning. Those of you that are online, those of you that are meeting people, don't be afraid to say in your profile, I'm looking for a committed relationship, I'm looking for a life partner, I'm looking for whatever, co-created partnership, whatever it is for you, don't be afraid to state it. And um, does it take some of the mystery out of it? Who cares? Do you want mystery when you're dating? Don't you want to know you're going in the same place somebody else is going? Because we're looking for somebody who wants what you want and they want it with you. That's a Susan phrase, but it, it will help you. Does this person want what I want and do they want it with me? In the beginning, you're exploring. Okay, so you have it on your profile. Don't be afraid in your first dates to say, um, so in your own language, not mine, so are you open to the idea of a relationship? You know, people say that online. <laughs> For those of you online, it's a very different world, right? You get in there and they learn to just say it because they really just want to get laid or they want to just have fun or whatever it is. So this is going to help you. Don't worry. Oh, like, does that sound like I'm pressuring them? This is basic, vital information that you need to know. It's like getting an airplane ticket. You want to go to San Diego. 
you're not hesitant to ask them, by the way, does this plane go to San Diego? <laughs> Tell the travel agent, I'd like to go to San Diego. Oh, no, no, that might be difficult. Maybe they just want to go to Seattle. You know, maybe if I get to Seattle, then I can hitch a ride to San Diego. And maybe, maybe over the course of time, they'll want to take me there. Oh, that's a cluster. So we don't go there. All right. Step number one. What do we do? You've got to be able to know what you want. Now, you want this commitment. What is it? Is it, I want sexual exclusivity. I want to know that you are headed toward a relationship. I want to know that we are planning to get married. I want to know the label, how to define the relationship. What is it that you need? Get that clear in your mind, all right? Secondly, now that you know what it is that you need, this form of commitment, now you have to know, because it's going to be important in the negotiation and the presentation, why is this important to you? This is in our conversational tone, how we distinguish the difference between I just want some petty thing because I want it for my ego, and this is really important to me. When we understand why a person wants what they want, we're often much more willing to give it to them. Or better yet, we discover that we wanted it too for the same reasons. But know what you want as form of commitment and know why you want it. Why is it important to you? These are questions that you should be asking yourself and write them out, make little phrases, because I feel safe and secure because I know when I'm in a committed relationship that I can give you the best of the love I have to give because I'm busy, my time is important to me, my heart is important, and I want to make a wise investment with somebody who's looking to create the same thing. Whatever it is, I want a future. I see my vision of a partnership. I want to live with a person and wake up with them every day and have incredible adventures. So get your why in order. Any questions about that? Not sure? Want to chat? Send something into Super Chat. I will find it and I will see it. Okay? So you all know your why. Very, very, very important. If you haven't done this, please take time during this show afterwards to write it out. Are there any questions about this so far? All right, everybody's in here. B, hi. Oh, good. I'm here as well. Excellent. B and Gwyneth, I love them so much. I met them in person at my Munich meet and greet. I have Florida coming up in early December this year. That'll be 2023. I have Singapore in uh, January through February of 2024 and New York City. Thank you, all of you who sent your requests to media at susanwinter.net. Um, we have a lovely group. It's closed now, but it is a lovely, lovely group. And exactly the same as what I did, and I put all you people through that I've met, either traveling throughout Europe or in the Munich tour, or whether it was Sorrento or Croatia, wherever we met, I put you through a, a little bit of paces that are similar to what you all should be doing when you date. I had to vet the person. If I'm putting a group of people together, whether it's a coaching class or it's me meeting a group of individuals, I need to know who you are and where you're coming from. That's not just for me. I can handle most any kind of situation. It's for everybody else's comfort. And that way, we know who are the serious people who want to come and show up and contribute and there are always a few people that are not invited. And it's not to be mean. It's just we want the vibe to be right. So thank you, all of you that came to the New York City uh, signing up. And we are having our big event next Wednesday. Okay. Hi, my dear. Oh, Jillian has been a member for 11 months. Sweet, wonderful woman who is supporting us. Greetings, Susan and all brilliant Susanites. I'll be on the replay crew due to work, so I can't be in chat. 
This is an excellent topic. Date for the relationship you want, not a specific person. Oh my gosh, Jillian, I so, so, so love this. This is really beautiful. Yeah, it's not the person, I know they're important, but this keys into a little bit of what I teach about the dream. The person is vitally important. They are the one with whom you are going to gain this vision of your dream, what you want to create, but they must be functional. And that's my step number three. Uh, right, you are not accommodating yourself to what they would prefer or diminishing what you want to ease their lack of abilities. You're not dumbing it down just to fit for them. You'll get that relationship and all the anxiety and heartache that goes with it. You will never be happy when you have to come downward from what you want into a lesser format and try to participate there. It's, it looks like it's going to be safe. You will not feel good when you're there. Okay, so wise advice from Jillian. Thank you, everyone. Um, let's see, what do we have here? I would love a coaching class for dating. I will be going back to coaching, uh, group coaching. I take very small groups. The reason I really work with you, I was supposed to be working with my coaching group for like an hour, twice a week. I was giving them two hours because I can't, I've done individual for so long. I'll be doing a series of master classes coming up. I'll be doing more group things, but they're intimate. And the smaller the group, the price is different. Okay. So, but you're getting a group environment and hands on coaching. Okay. So you got that. Number one, what do you want and why do you want it? What do we have here? Oh, $5. Thank you so much, Jillian. Again, Susan, I wish I could make the New York City meet and greet. It will be amazing. Please let us know the highlights. And if you have another in the future, you know, I, I chose the date that they gave us. It's August 2nd, between six to eight in the financial district. The people that have been invited know the exact address. And I give again, public announcement, private invitation, and it won't be the last. I know August is rough. A lot of people are on vacation. A lot of people wanted to come. And my colleagues in my industry didn't understand. I'm not, ex well, I am. I'm excluding them because this is for fans, followers, and clients that I've never met in person. It's not just like, hey, New York, I'm here. It's not Susan's having a big party. So I didn't invite colleagues or aligned businesses. I didn't do that. So absolutely, yes, we'll have another one. And um, so this is my first in the United States and there will be more. Okay, thank you so much, Jillian, I appreciate that. Okay, let's go on to number two. I don't know whether I should read two or three first. Uh, and I'm trying to think about this, but uh, let me go out of order then. I'm gonna take this as the second one. The second thing you need to consider in getting to commitment, <laughs> what type of material am I working with? Let me repeat that. What type of material am I working with? I am asking you, though you want this thing and you'd like to get it from this person, what is their capacity, their desire, their willingness and their ability to match and give it to you. Because otherwise we're at a standstill. I can go into how to negotiate and how to, ooh, that's the last part, you know, the communication and setting it up. But if this person is unwilling, unable, uninterested, going in a different direction, you can't do it. Trust me, how many of you have had a one-off, sleep with somebody, you think, oh, that they're cute, they're fun, whatever. And suddenly you realize, oh my God, now I really like them. And they didn't want a relationship. And you thought you didn't for a while. Now, you've been with them, you sleep with them a bit, you start to like them, but you can't turn it around because you didn't start in the right direction. And I know not everybody knows what they want from the beginning. This is an exploration. 
when you meet somebody, it's not like, I know that you're going to be the one. That's never about it. It's like, basically, I'm going in this direction. If you want to go in that direction, then we'll see, we'll explore it together, right? But all of what I'm saying to you and all of your desire to get to commitment, if you have poor material to work with, you are not going to be able to build your elegant design. This doesn't mean that there's something wrong or bad or defective with this person. It's just that for the vision, for the dream of what you are trying to create, this is not a suitable partner. And so you must consider, is this somebody that I want to be a partner, that can be a partner? Okay, because I think far too many of you just get hung up on this. And I, I, I think it's a bit of an ego thing. Oh, none of us want to be discarded. None of us want to be thought of as less. And yet at the same time, who are we asking this of? Would they even know the difference? <laughs> I mean, if, if you're a really high value person and you're out there and you're having stellar behavior, showing up, being present, being warm, being open, knowing your value and they don't get it, do you really want to just like shake them to make them see it? It's a lot of work. So who are they your bookend? Do they match you? Otherwise, don't even bother. You can present it to them, but don't, don't invest, okay? This, this is the thing that gives me an income. You all invest. You invest in somebody that's not going where you're going and doesn't want what you want and isn't even sure that they want it with you. And then you try and steer that ship around, steer it around. You just, it does, it's not going to work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the investment. All I do is turn you around and get you refocused in the other direction, which is valuable, but you don't have to go through the pain. Okay. So if you're done with the anxiety, you don't want this business anymore, just know who's able to do this, who's w ready, willing, and able, locked and loaded, okay? Nathusa, the more I engage with online dating, the more I realize it is the wrong foundation and breeds distrust, even when exclusive. Better to connect elsewhere. Nathusa, yes, and this is why I truly love meeting in person. Thank you, COVID. Now the lockdown is over, I mean, it's, I understand you don't want to go to a singles event. I, I'd actually like to have one. This is kind of the beginning of me seeing how it would work with these spaces. Um, I had somebody who ushered me into the space for the meet and greet, and I, I don't have to pay. There's no open bar, but I don't have to pay for this space, which is quite lovely. But uh, it's just like it would be nice to have a collection of like-minded people that have good behavior that isn't just like some app that you've never heard of that still throws together the same bunch of garbage, but more like a, a group of people that are of a certain philosophy. And I would like to examine that in my future, very much so. To offer something to all of you where you would kind of know that if they like this work, that they're somewhat on the same page. Doesn't mean they'll be your one, but at least you're of the same mindset and, you know, thoughtful and self-aware and, uh, you know, looking for something meaningful and have correct comportment. Okay. I'm very affectionate and loving towards someone while dating. I think that's great. I think that's fabulous. Why hide the skills that you have? The question now is always to make sure that they are somebody who's worthy of our investment. Now, Please don't feel badly if you've wasted a lot of time on people that as you review them, you go, God, what was I thinking? <laughs> That's how we learn. We would like to learn sooner rather than later. You don't want to look back on 20 years and go, God, did I mess up? But, you know, this is, we're improving, right? Okay. Um I'm usually very awkward when I meet new people, especially when I'm nervous. Everybody's nervous meeting new people, especially if it's in if it's in a 
an environment where you feel like you're dating or being looked at or you want to be chosen by the person. I think that makes it exceedingly uncomfortable. That's why some of these um, meet in person dating apps are trying to get you to have icebreakers or do something fun. You know, it is hard to show up at a singles event like, hi, I'm single, I'm alone, oh God. You feel horrible being there to begin with. So you know, th there have to be some other ways to do it. I'm actually, it's funny because I'm actually kind of pivoting into some new areas right now. And this is more the building and uh, exploring time because I'm, I'm very much a fan of solo travel for people that are uncoupled or people that uh, like time away from their partner. And so it doesn't mean that everybody there is a single, but it means that you are having an experience on a cruise or in a hotel or whatever with an event going on with people who are of a like mind so that you already have a commonality. All right. Okay. So you understand that you must assess the type of material you're looking for. All right. Uh, Self-awareness first, then friendship to build a relationship upon. I agree. All right. Annie QT. Hi. So she is in Annie, you're in the dating games guide, right? Because I have new buyers for the older women, younger men too. And I'm so happy, you know, that you're using one of the things is you all have access to me when you buy these two things. I'm not just going to go, oh, here's the stuff. Good luck. <laughs> you speak with me directly and I text you back, give an audio, or if I have time, do a video for you. So Annie's been asking questions. Um, let me go back to just see what Annie says here. Oh, where were you, Annie, Annie, Annie? I saw you. Hang on. Okay, she's, I think it's something retracted. Anyway, oh, hi, Susan. Since I'm following you, I've updated my profile, and it says that I'm ready for a great love story, but I'm happy to date to get to know people. Excellent. That's a, that's a really smart way to take the pressure off of them. Like, oh, my God, she wants to get married. Oh, my God, I'm going to run but, you know, honestly, if people aren't where you are at the time that you are, it's timing and you miss the opportunity. But great, because it sounds like in the meantime, you can do some duty dating. Now, I want to. Uh, OK, so how does duty dating fit into this? Duty dating is a Susan thing. That's dating for data, which means dating for research. That is breaking out of your type, doing things that are uncomfortable, challenging yourself to present different parts of your personality that you may not have and opening yourself up to different types of people, vocation, looks, ages, whatever nationalities that you never thought you'd be interested in. The reason, greater self-awareness. Thank you, Jillian, greater self-awareness. To see I was in this mode of liking this kind of person and doing this kind of thing and presenting this way, <sighs> I haven't had a lot of success with it. It's the what if, kind of the wild card. I told, I, I think you all know this story. So I, I have a, a client back in, oh, I think it was like 2015, 16. Uh, this great guy in Silicon Valley and very big job. And, and he, young guy, very successful. He had a certain type of woman. He always dated, always a certain series of nationalities, a certain area in the world that he always dated. It was an automatic draw, but it was for him one that always, always, always made him feel inadequate, even though he was superior. It was just like, he never came out of it feeling good. And I begged him, begged him. I said, just do me a favor. Just once. Date somebody completely different. Different look. Please. Six hour first date. They were together a couple of years. She turned out to be a little cray cray, but you know, at any rate, he would have never known that was a possibility. It allows us to realize that we are attracted to more than we thought we were. And the fun thing about duty dating is that you get to try on a lot of these conversations you're afraid to have in a high stakes event. Now, to answer everybody's question, oh, but Susan, is it ethical? Yeah, you're a serious person looking for a real relationship and you are in the process of expanding your options. You go in with a very low bar because this is something very new to you. But I promise you, if you saw something that wasn't formerly on your template of what you like, and you really like them, you continue to examine that possibility, right? Okay, 
I think there's somebody else here. I think this is Naftuza. Oh, beautiful Naftuza, $5. Please offer a meet and greet. Speed dating events I've been to, I felt like they were herding cattle. No introductions, no mixing very odd. I wouldn't do it that way. Naftuza, I don't know where you live. I thought you were in New York, but now I don't think you are. So meet and greets are fun. You know why? I First of all, I want to know who follows the work. There's so many of you. I got to put um, Jillian on a call so I could see her face. But so many of you, I can't put a face to a name. Sometimes you're my clients and I, I, I'm working with you, but I never meet you in person. You're in London, you're in Dubai, you're wherever you are. So this is a lot of fun for me. And what I like about, uh, that's a good idea, a bigger meet and greet. The nice thing about that is that everybody's of the same mentality when they walk in the room. It's kind of like, because we're here following this type of, this woman with the kind of method or philosophy that she has, we're, we're on par with that. We're kind of like, this is the behavior you can expect from us. Linda Brown, $50. I love having you here. I thank you so much. You have had ongoing generosity. I mean, ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. Mwah. Nathusa, you're in Phoenix. <laughs> I'm in Scottsdale, not today. Now, girl, we have got to meet. All right? Do not forget that. I'll be back sometime in mid-December. We have to meet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Linda Brown, I think too many times we allow the hormones to get in the way of good common sense. Thank you, Miss Susan. Oh, you know we do. We are all guilty of choosing with our eyes something that we really like and then trying to jam everything we want into their character. <laughs> I've been, I've, I'm, I'm guilty too. Is it shallow? You like what you like. But all of us need to expand. You know, if you think of some of the great loves of your life, maybe the great passions were built on, you know, chemistry and, and stuff like that. But maybe some of the great loves were people who really got you and got you on a very deep level and were really there for you. And more than that, people that you admired who they were in the world and, and those great loves may not have had the most amazing looks or some rock hard body, but they were so astounding and amazing as people that the love is so great. So that's okay. I will continue on. So you have to look at your material. Yes. Yes. Last one. This has to do with negotiation. Anything you do, whether it is a friendship, and Linda, thank you so much, whether it's a friendship or it is whatever, whenever you have somebody that is fighting you for something that you want, you have to know where is their resistance. You need to really ask yourself, before you ask them, really look at this person, this partner that you want this commitment this person you've lived with that won't marry you, this person you're dating that doesn't seem to want to get into sexual exclusivity, that you're just about to walk away, you have to really think, why? What is their why they want? Why they don't want what I want? Because you know what you want and why you want it. Why don't they want it and what is their resistance? You have no platform for negotiation or presenting your point unless you address that why. Why? And don't just say they're not ready. No. They may not know why. That's terrifying. You have an unaware partner. Good luck. They may not want to tell you why. You should be able to look through and see the human behavior. You've got a lot of training how to see through with all these videos on how to see through that stuff. Or just ask them point blank, what is it about that? I, I'm not contesting you. I, I'm, not, I'm not fighting you. I'm not making you bad or wrong. 
I really need to know why you have such an aversion to a label. Here's a good one that a lot of you are going through. We're together. We hang out together. We walk around as a couple. People are like, is that your boyfriend, your girlfriend? I, I mean, you're not a friend. You're not a friend with benefits. It's much more than that. I know that you know that. I'm embarrassed. I mean, I like I don't know what to say to them. They call you my boyfriend. They call you my girlfriend. I, I you know, what is it? We 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 have to talk about this. I don't want to label. Okay. Please help me to understand what is the aversion? What is what is the concern? What's the fear? Make sure they have an answer. If they can't explain their answer, they just don't want it because they don't want it, that's not an answer. You got to keep going because if they don't want it and they're not willing to understand why they don't want it, you're you're at a roadblock. That relationship is done because you want what you want in order to, you, you, you all are looking for commitment to give you another day, another reason to stay. Give me a reason to be here. Give me a reason to continue to love you, to try to show up. Because if I don't have this thing that I need because of this, this, and this, I got no reason to be here. You need to help me, right? I need this from you. Let's talk about it. And if you can't talk to your partner about just getting a label, or figuring out where it's going, or figuring out that you've been together a year and a half and you're on a time clock for babies and they're stalling, you pretty much got your answer. But there's don't worry that pushing it at this point, at that point, that you've done all these things that I've mentioned in sequence. And if you've done that and you worry, oh, I don't want to put pressure on them, this is a necessity for you. So you can't, you can't acquiesce here. All right? Do you understand? Let me read some of your comments. Uh, show Susan some love and leave a like. Thank you, Philip. Uh, it's a longtime quiet listener. Just a shout out to you, Miss Susan. Meet up in LA, please. I'm 52. My partner's 32. Oh, I love it. Nucci. Have you read Older Women, Younger Men, or have you got the that guide? It's really good. I'm sure you're fine, or you wouldn't be on here. I love it when you speak up. Thank you so much. I'm not, um, you know, psychic. I can't I can't tell who's in here, so I really like this kind of introduction. Thank you so much. Um, this is great. I would love to. L.A., there are a lot of people I like there that I would like to partner with. I'd love to, you know, do something with while I'm there. You all know that I like Jonathan Asley. He's been very supportive of my work. And to be honest, the only colleague who has tried to help me. I don't ask, but believe me, nobody offers. So I owe him a lot for that. You don't have to help me, you know. Most everybody in my industry is just out for themselves. So when I see that level of um, camaraderie, it's rare. It's really rare. So um, I would love to go to LA. I'm only a hop, skip, and a jump. So thank you. That would be great. And then if I have a meet and greet in LA, I will be announcing it here. I'll put it on Instagram. It'll be on the community page. It'll be on my website, blah, blah, blah. All right. Lisa, hi, Susan. Took me five years of online dating to meet my sweetie. Yes. Yes, just like Jillian. Okay. Listening to you helped me so much. We are now planning on getting engaged looking for rings second time around for both of us. Lisa B, that is so beautiful. You know, I love it when people come here to just remind all of you that might be losing hope. This is a real thing. You can get to love. I know it seems atrocious out there. I don't believe me. I am sympathetic to everybody that's in pain and agony because of the confusion and the games and the drama and the neuroses and I don't know, whatever stuff people have going on these days. But I really do appreciate this. And thank you so much for stopping in here to share the good news with us. 
it does a lot to help other people. Can I tell you in the video requests, how many requests I get for please, um, I'm losing hope. I don't know that I believe in love. I think I have to stay single forever. I can't take one more heartbreak. I think I'm done. And it's not because they don't want to love or they fear loving. It's that they've just hit the wall of so many non-compliant lying people that don't know what they want themselves. So congratulations on your clarity and your determination and your persistence. And you found your match. This is beautiful. Ring shopping. Fabulous. Fabulous. Congratulations, Lisa B. Hi, Carrie. How you doing? Todd Freeman. Hello, Todd. Your point about negotiation, about dealing with resistance from your person. I saw a related point on one of your other videos, never wait on someone. All right, that's good. Okay, anyone, in essence, take responsibility for your own happiness. So I had this thing about um, nobody has the right to reserve you. Nobody has the right to reserve your heart. Well, they just, um, you know, kind of float on their back or just lollygag and draw out the time of your investment with them. You know, when you're young, and I have a lot of young followers, but when, when you're young, it seems like forever. It's like you're 18, 19, 20. It's like, oh yeah, okay, date someday. But remember, do your selection, taste from the menu, go to the buffet table, make sure you've had a little bit of everything so you have learned what you want. Know your disposition. You can't change your disposition. You can become a better version of yourself. But there are people who are inherently givers. There are people who are inherently selfish. They can try to work on it, but pretty much you are what you are. You're honest, you're ethical, you're kind, you have no empathy, you really don't care, you're self-centered. That is what it is, right? We can hope to be better, but... So, you know, as you go out into the world, understand that it's like practicing in a game or a sporting event or practicing whether it's your, your arias or it's your violin or whatever you're doing, that if you practice with imperfection, you will le learn imperfection. If you practice failure, you will be good at failure. We are trying to practice success. And to practice success takes a different mindset. And I know when I was younger, I had no filter. I, I didn't pursue, for God's sake, no. But men would always, I just, they'd come up to you. But it was also a kinder time period. You know, everybody got fooled once or twice, but it was not the norm. They came after you for marriage, a committed relationship, and they were pretty much good guys. You know, maybe not the right guy, but good guys. So nowadays it's vastly different. And time can be spent in exploration of the different types of people you may want to date, but time should not be wasted in trying to prop up a relationship where you're doing all the work. Who's doing the work in your relationship to keep it going? Is it you trying to deal with what they give you? trying to make it okay that you have less than you want, trying to find a way in your head to minimize the pain. Do you, I mean, that's, that's what many of us have done. And we didn't know it at the time until you start to see it becomes a repetitive pattern. So I urge all of you to try to get on a track of success because you wouldn't want to practice a golf swing inac inaccurately because you're gonna, it's just when you really want to play well and when it counts, what do you know? How to miss, right? Okay, let's see what else is here. Um, thank you for all the advice you've given me on Instagram, Susan. Matthew, hi, Matthew Watson has helped me a great ton. I appreciate that, Matthew. Thank you. I'm another one who found love online after 10 years of being single. Melly, oh my God. He is everything I ever wanted, 
and I would not settle for less until I found him. And you, Susan, helped me a lot. Mel, uh, wow, this is so cool. I am so, so, so happy that you're all getting success. And Lance Bird, I know you. I know you. I know you. Oh, my good. I'm lucky, too. We got married. And thank you for the advice and the help, Susan. I know Lance. I love Lance. Fire truck. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. And we've spoken on the phone and... You know, um, I, I, oh, and I realized those of you who are members, the YouTube members, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I was supposed to have a quarterly Zoom meeting. Okay, I, I normally did that right after this show. And then I have an appointment I have to go to every single Thursday. So I know I owe you more stuff. I really do. And I may, I may reconfigure all of that if <laughs> YouTube really told me to do it. And then they kind of, you know, they kind of dropped the ball with their end of it. But I, I want everybody to know that you are welcome here. Those of you who support me by being fans or friends or family, I appreciate that. I know that you're just doing it to be nice, but know that I really do appreciate that. And Lance has been a family member for many, many years. And, and you don't have to continue, Lance. It's, it's all good. I'm just so happy that you're very happy. Okay. So now you've got these things that we're talking about, right? Because in order to break through their resistance, let's say you got a good partner, they're a good person, and you know that they are valuable, and you know that they, they really are in every way somebody you want to be with. But this next level commitment thing or the clarification that you need for what you have, just so you're both on the same page, that they, they're, it's a sticking point for them. Again, you must know, okay, the issue, their fears, and their reasons around it. Now, I'm going to go into something I wasn't going to talk about, but this is the stuff that I like to do with you personally, especially in consultations, is to show you how to language now that you know all of this. So in asking somebody something that's uncomfortable, remember, our goal is to never make them feel bad or wrong. You are never going to get the truth out of somebody if they think you're going to judge them. So your attitude has to be completely neutral in asking these questions. And no matter how much anger is seething, you're like, damn it, I've been sleeping with you. I want exclusivity with a fucking right. You just got to kind of go, oh, honey, I really need to, I need to know why this is a thing for you. I don't want you to be uncomfortable and I don't want us to keep having this conversation. But I need to under, help me to understand why it's uncomfortable, what is it? And listen to what they say, and really listen to what they say. And if you're not sure, say, okay, I hear that. I, I, so tell me a little bit more. Can you tell me more? I just, can you give me an example? How do you think it would make you feel? Oh, do you think it would take away your independence? Is that what you've experienced in the past? Mm. I, I don't see it that way, but I understand. So now you have to align with them. They will buck and kick until you hear them, get to the root cause, and then align with them. And again, I was right to put number two to vet the quality of the person because if they're, if they're a player, if they're somebody inherently avoidant, good luck. I mean, just start with fresh material. Do yourself a favor. I see these people in the gym, and I know you know these things, where they have these, they're on a certain kind of material where they can push and they've got these bar things and they're pushing all these plates. If you're with somebody who's an avoidant or they're shut down or they only want to play or they have such an immense fear of falling in love, that this is, that's going to be your life every single day, every single day. So now that you understand the nature of their fear and they've given you an example of what they don't want and why they don't want it, you thank them. You say, wow, that's really, really helpful. Give it a couple beats because you have to think about the positive opposite. This is where we apply metaphysics, alchemy. We have to shift the scenario. If you really see that their concept of why they're fighting this thing that is so natural right now for both of you, and you've gotten the answer, look for its positive opposite. 
if you're going to have a trouble with this, you're like, oh my God, I've got it, but I don't know how to say it, consider a consultation, okay? Because I'll walk you through it, how to do it. But you have to reframe it for them so that they can see that there is another way to look at this. If they don't know that there is another option for how to feel about this thing, how to experience this with you, they will always default to the locked position where they are because their history has told them this is what it is. Unlocking a person's position is unlocking their mind. And a lot of it is your work in understanding the speaking, the language. So that, that's a skill set in and of itself. I hope you'll understand. There is a finesse to it. Okay, now. I put down my glasses. <laughs> it looks like more like this. Are there any questions? I've given you a lot. Okay. Anything else? I don't, you're all very nice. You're very quiet. We have a smaller group today. I think everybody's on vacation. That's wonderful. So I think this is great. So if, uh, if there are any last minute questions, yes, no, no, yes. Uh, I love this. Todd, you all have given me such nice things. Okay. Okay. Jaime or Jamie? Hi, Susan. I'm 45, single, and a successful business owner, yet to find any man within my range 10 years to be serious. Half of these men don't even ask you out formally. There has been a decline in, in men knowing how to pursue. Um, a guy who's your match shouldn't be terrified to ask you out. You're right. You haven't met your match yet. But we have Jillian and we have, is it Melly? Melly? We have Lisa B. Wait, who else? There are a couple. Melly, Lisa B. We've got three ladies here who've met their, met their partner and they held out. I think um, if you will do better as a 45 single successful business owner, you will probably do better in environments where you are meeting other business types, not just at a restaurant or at a function with your girlfriends or whatever, or the bar. Uh, not, not saying that you do that, but a professional event or especially events that are what we call, you know, growth oriented like if you have a growth mindset. Uh, not, not for the people who are climbing up the ladder, like trying to make their first whatever, but people who are really successful. I would look at some of these events that you have, uh, some of the conferences to up your skills, just the type of people who are already in your realm functioning at your level. Uh, there is a proliferance now in the United States of private clubs. I belong to one and I, I have found that in the couple of conversations that I've had with individuals there, it's not everyone. Sometimes I'm just warm and social, but there are times that I walk in and I have a conversation with somebody that is so deep, so profound. This has nothing to do with my business. I'm not looking to create business ventures. I'm not looking to climb socially. I'm not looking to marry or capture one of these guys, not even on my mind. I'm looking for like-minded people with whom I can associate and expand my network of friends, um, alliances, people that I like, truly get inspired by. And sometimes these private clubs have the level of successful people already there. So if indeed it is the problem of gentlemen being scared to approach you, wondering, she's so successful and so pretty, what do I have to offer her? Because that goes through a man's mind. Then we need to start with men that don't have that issue and are more inspired by a co-created partner. 
that has all these incredible things, like somebody that they don't have to educate on life or career. That would be really helpful for you, I think. Go to those places. Go to the places where you learn, where you get inspired. And it doesn't even have to be business. It can be philosophy. It can be culture. It can be the arts. But if you're at that level of society and the world, you need to be associating with people like that. Okay, this is the first time in my life because of this alliance with my club that I've ever even associated with people like that. I mean, I have throughout my years met them, of course, and we gravitate toward each other. There's a real comfort, but it's just that I never, I'm going to work on my home for my whole life. I've been an independent contractor that shows up on a set, goes home, show up for a conference, go home, show up for a speaking gig, go home. So who do I meet in my home? Right? So this is wonderful. I suggest that for you. Things you really, really love. Who do we have here? Ah, let's see. Richard, $20. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you. Susan, in the initial talk about commitment with potential partners, should we discuss all the details of what a commitment would involve or several conversations? Some people become scared with too many details. Yes. Do not give them too many details. Give them the, in the first meeting, Use words that everybody understands. And if you think they don't understand it, add some kind of qualifying phrase like, yes, uh, no, actually, I am I am a relationship person. I'm looking for a committed relationship. I really value partnership. And if they want to go on and say, hey, do you need to be married? Say, uh, um, I'm not opposed to it, but I don't need to have that. Or whatever your truth is. And then stop there. And if they have an answer, say, what about you? And you can hammer out the details of how that looks later because this is a brilliant question and I thank you so much for answering it. But the two of you are going to find your design together. So if we come in with like, I do this, this, and this, and I want that, 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 it's good that you know that. But part of the magic in meeting your mate is that they are going to do their contribution to your dream to your design. And you may not have thought about, I never thought of creating a partnership with somebody that I know travels six months out of the year. Oh my God, I'd love to do that. Can I do that? How would I do that? Can I work remotely? Oh, I'm kind of excited. Let me see if that's something I want. Let me see if it's something that's doable. I never thought about that. So ultimately the details come later. And the details come later, the more you know them and you know what is possible because the filtration system in the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth date, those dates are where you're looking for commonality, ease, and you're looking to test their disposition. Do they get bitchy? Are they cranky? Are they impatient? Do they snap at you? Because if they start doing that, all these things about it, how the details of it later, that's a no-go. That goes into, are, are they good material? Brilliant question. Thank you for asking. Love these clarifications. Here's one more. Let's see. Annie QT, $10. Thank you so, so much. One of the problems I see in dating apps is that when you've been using it for a while, you see so many fresh, you see that many fresh meat just got out of a relationship and are looking for a rebound. That is um, kind of a rule, but we don't know. If they've been in a long-term relationship, they've left a 25-year marriage, yeah, they're not ready to settle down. They need to sow some wild oats. If they got out of something and they've been in serial monogamy, whole different story, I think. I think. So read between the lines. If you see somebody that's really compelling, remember... You're going to go through this. This is where you test them. So there's always an exception to the rule. We make these red flags because there seems to be some human pattern here. There's a, the Human nature has a pattern that when you come out of a long-term static thing, you kind of don't know what you want. You're getting your bearings, and you might be a little wild for a year. I watched my girlfriend go through I can't tell you how many machinations I'm like, oh my God, who in the world are you? Who who are you? <laughs> no, so she terrified me. So that's different. Okay. What were what was the situation? How long were they involved? 
very different. I'm glad you asked that too, because I don't want to stop you from seeing somebody that you think is on the rebound that may just be exhausted like everybody else. Oh God, not one more relationship. Oh my God, I don't want to be fooled. I don't want to have crazy girl. I don't want to have them be a, a narcissist. I don't, whatever. Okay. Let's see. Did I get to everybody? I got to Richard. I got to Linda. Do we have any other questions before I leave here? I want to make sure I've gotten to all of you. Uh, let's see, Lance. I think the tactic to meet the right people is different in places where we live. In the U.S., many areas can be like different countries altogether. New York versus where I live is uh, planets almost. Yeah, he's in the South, okay? Beyond that, people are people, and I think I see similar personalities no matter where we are, okay? So now, to recap, don't be afraid to want what you want. Know why you want what you want. That helps you. That really helps you to make a plausible argument that's going to work in your favor. All right? Two, vet the quality of the material you're working with. Can they go the distance? Are they even capable? If they're capable, are they even willing? So, you know, before you apply all this effort, and if they are resisting you on whatever this type of commitment is that you would need to have to make you feel safe, secure, and give you the energy to love them one more day, because that's what it's really about. It's this arm out, right? Then you have to know why they are resisting. They have to give you an answer. And if you don't understand, ask for examples. And then your job is to give it a couple beats, maybe even give it a day, think it through, get a consultation with me if you need to, to sort out your positioning. And then you present an entirely different scenario where you have repositioned the camera angle to a whole different place. What the last video I did was taken in the den, like the main videos, um, why they lose interest. Like this is for people that want to get an ex back and they knew that they hesitated and then the other person thought they weren't interested and how you have to get them back and shooting a bunch of different scenarios about how to do that. And I was in the office because I have these big skylights coming down. I thought, let me try it here. People were so happy. Like, oh my God, this is so interesting. You've got a different background. New York, you've got a different background. So it's like picking up the camera and moving it over here so they have the opportunity to see the place that you think would give them no resistance, where you can both have what you want to be in partnership with each other. So there we go. I hope this has helped all of you. Uh, let's see. I for somehow lost the chat, and I'm not sure why. I can't over, I don't know what happened. I must have touched a button. I cannot see the chat anymore. So I'm going to say goodbye to all of you. Thank you very much. I will see you next week. We are having our big meet and greet. Oh, let me give you a couple of announcements. And again, I'm so sorry. The chat went bye-bye. I can't read it. Know that I'm with you. Okay. Um, Florida. I'll be there December 6th through 10th. I'm doing one hour individuals. You're going to write me in advance. We're going to set it up. A Day with Susan is still being offered in New York because I thought Core Club was closing. They're open for another two months. We, we're moving locations. So I'm going to be here. And that's fabulous. And I love to take you to that place because it is so elegant, so chic. And if you take a three-hour session with me, you are getting an exquisite gourmet meal. It, you're going to be treated like a king or queen. Yep, you deserve it. Consultations, check those out on my website. And Dating Games Guide and Older Women, Younger Men, those are still available in the Retrieve. And that's an app that you can put on your phone for free. You have all the information and you have access to me through the community portal. Thank you, everyone. So great to have you show up. Thank you, B and Gwyneth. Adore you all. See you next week. Bye-bye.